breakouts are not um, are not recorded. Um, so uh, I, just to make sure you guys are filling in the roll call, that is super good, and uh, keep uh, filling that out. Um, I just wanted to cover briefly uh, a little bit on on why we are here before we get rolling. Um, as I've mentioned a lot before, uh, network-centric resources are super hard and they take an incredibly long time to develop and get right. Um, funders are often only invested in the launch and then expect that a network or community will run it on their own. Um, sustainability is, uh, um, uh, uh, is about sharing ownership with your network and community um, and having clarity on what it will actually take. That's what I think we're talking about during this call. Um, uh, if you haven't, um, and probably not now is the time to look at it, but I have a link there to our life of a network-centric resource, um, the life cycle. And the life cycle is quite long. Um, it is a really uh, extended amount of time if you are trying to um, uh, have something that's really working. So, um, and you'll note in the life cycle, it goes from like preconception to death. Um, and death is not often something we want to think about. But um, when we are thinking about our resources that we are developing, and we want to make sure that people are going to be able to use them properly, we have to think about things like how is the content going to be recycled? How might other networks use it in the future. So one, you know, having a, a resource that even though you might not be developing it any longer, how um, have you set up licensing? Um, is it actually in a place where people will, will be able to have access to it even though you are no longer developing and maintaining it? So all those things are, are critical things to, to keep in mind um, here. And uh, what I would love to get from you, um, uh, just a, a quick little, uh, report back from each group, but basically like not a, you know, here's what we talked about, but basically like what were the big top level takeaways, things that, you know, suddenly made you go, oh, right, right. I hadn't thought of that. Um, those sort of stuff. So, oh, but before I get you to do that, um, can I please get a volunteer to help me take notes um, on this? Anyone? Um, would you help me take notes in the Google Doc? I can help. Ah, oh, Madeline, you are a rock star. Thank you so much. Um, I, I have a feeling you've done this before on one of the on the last. I love it. I'm into it so much. And you did a great job because actually I had a great blog post after the last one you did. So super appreciative. Um, so. Uh, let's go, uh, uh, John's group. Anybody in John's group, what are, what were your big ahas, takeaways um, from your discussion? If y'all are going to be quiet, I can I can jump in with some of the ones that I had. Thanks on thanks to the conversation. Uh, please. Um, uh, a big one was the importance of kind of developing with the community and respecting power dynamics around the level of technicality required to to operate, contribute to, function with the the resource. So if you're doing if you're going super technical and the community is not kind of following along, you've probably had a disconnect there. So if you had developed it more slowly with the community, it would have worked a little better. Fabulous. Anyone, um, Al, Neil, Belin, any, any, any other um, ahas for you guys? Uh, the one for me was um, kind of high level. I've just joined a new <clears throat> nonprofit and just stepping into um, uh, an organization like probably so many, none of us, of course, uh, with very disorganized data sets as a fundraiser that made my job very difficult, is making my job very difficult. So just an acknowledgement that really that's the norm, sadly. Uh, and just naming that kind of normalized it and made me feel a little bit more confident. Adjust my cool. expectations kind of thing. Cool. Cool. Anyone else from that group? Al or Belin? No, you're good. Okay. Um, let's move on then to group two. Uh, Chloe, um, in your group, would anybody have any good ahas, takeaways from, from your discussion? Oh, I, I 
can say a few words. <laughs> um, Please. I think we mainly talked about challenges, actually, because um, I think we are all facing a lot of challenges in developing or implementing these kind of resources. Um, but it was nice to see that it's something that everybody experiences. Um, and so I guess the, the two or three main thing is the importance to um, kind of localize the, the resource, the content, to make sure it's relevant in the local context and be open to feedback. So whether it's uh, at the moment of a training, whether it's when you're developing the resource, to make sure that it's really inclusive and has um, and, and allows everybody to provide their feedback. Um, so being open and transparent and, and having these rounds of testing and getting the feedback to make sure that you get it as right as possible and that it's as relevant as possible in, in a local context. Um, yeah, I think that was the main, the main takeaway. <laughs> Great. So um, Paul, Ashley, Madeline, anyone else uh, want to chime in on that? What you've got, uh, any, any takeaways or ahas from that group? Okie doke, let's move on then to group three. So Chad's group, um, uh, what, what takeaways and ahas did you guys, did you come to? And, and, and also just Chad, thank you so much for stepping up to the plate and running Actually, that group at that last month, minute. I really appreciate that you did that. Surely, would anybody else like to uh, make an attempt at synthesizing before I give it a shot? Uh, I see some head shaking. Down. Okay. Um, so in looking back over all the different kinds of you know, feedback and advice and insights that were shared, I think the through line is, you know, look at what you're doing, but then bring people together in new ways and new relationships or in new roles that empower them to support each other and tackling the work at hand or solving the problem or addressing the issue, I think is, is how I would put it. You know, like reimagine the ways people can be together and help each other practice leadership uh, to improve, sustain, adapt, reuse, invent the network-centric resource. Great. Any anything to add from that group? Camille, Esther, Francesca. I thought it was really interesting that a lot of us. Um, talked about how our staff uh, from our partner organizations and the partner organizations themselves really feel some um, sustainability in their efforts towards social justice work um, by being a part of the network. You know, their local struggles, they can kind of think about it in a more global context and that even if they're struggling locally, other people are succeeding elsewhere and they can kind of see that as a larger impact. Um, and that's helped a lot of people keep dedication to social justice uh, work. Very cool, good. Anything else from that group? Um, actually, I mean, I, I, and just to, to, to riff on that last point, uh, Camille, so thank you. Um, I, the, the thing about you know, what is absolutely vital to where all of our networks is is the individuals that are in it, right? And um, I keep coming to this this thing of like, and um, uh, I'm, I'm likely to be evolving this project soon because um, I think there's there's two things that are much more critical um, for uh, for resources and is much more important to what we are getting at. One is um, just knowledge exchange, like how does knowledge exchange happen? Um, and I think that is that is a critical and vibrant thing for it. But then also the bit around individuals, and I think this thing around sustainability. So I'm 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 becoming much more excited about this idea of um, people libraries as opposed to resource libraries and things like that. So you know how uh, how does um, uh, this act of of knowledge exchange actually get to um, uh, um, individuals right being able to learn from one one another and all that it seems like that connection and even that bit in terms of like this call right I think the the thing that you will probably all walk away with is the small group bit where you were able to have that exchange going back and forth and that's the thing that we all sort of want 
Um, and in terms of our own, you know, the sustainability of everyone, um, uh, and particularly within social justice work, that piece around getting those insights from people and also having those opportunities to uh, um, build and make solidarity uh, is, is, is the actual critical and, and is the actual key. So, you know, while we are focusing on content often, um, and, you know, like uh, John, John has noted with, with Level Up and things like that, like, you know, that's content that's been there for a really long time, but it um, uh, uh, becomes an opportunity for us to have deeper understandings of the applications of digital security within the social justice work and to have those conversations. Um, and also one of the things around Level Up that's been critical for me was having a deeper understanding of how learning happens, right? And so, you know, it's, it's, it, I, these re, so developing the content is useful, um, but it's often not the thing that is the actual valuable thing. And I think that's something that, you know, we need to start thinking about a little bit more deeply um, within it. It's about these things of, you know, individual sustainabilities and, and all that. Um, the other thing I, I just wanted to, to uh, also point out was um, interesting that, you know, I think um, uh, this this conversation does originate with a conversation that John and I had at MozFest, where John was talking about long-term sustainability of resources. And um, you guys have taken the sustainability frame in your your conversations and gone in a number of different directions, which I I find super super um cool um because uh, it isn't just about the finances but it is also the like trying to think about how you're sustaining your networks throughout the long term and i i really appreciate that um so before i let you all go and and to take a little bit of the burden off of madeline um uh because i bet she's got some stuff here on their own i want to do some what what we used to call the silent ether padding, um, but uh, I want to do some silent Google docking. Um, and you will note uh, here in the Google doc uh, um, under where Madeline has been typing in, I've written best uh, practices for sustaining network centric resources. Now that you've had this conversation, I'd like each of you, if you don't mind, um, to write uh, a best practices, what it, a line of what you think uh, is a best practice for um, sustaining a net, network centric resources. The other thing um, that you can do, and I see, I think John's the one, probably, and if you have any um, re relevant links you want to share um, that I will include in the blog post when it gets published, please put it there. But I'm going to stop talking at you for a couple of minutes, and if you don't mind, just filling in that bit underneath where it says best practices for sustaining network centric resources. Put, put a line, what you, what you think is a best practice for sustaining a network centric resource. And I know we're gonna have that Google Doc font of every, everyone typing on the same line. Great. Really good stuff, folks. Keep keep it coming. I'll give you a couple more minutes.
Just two more minutes, folks, but keep them coming in. If you have more than one to add, I'd love to capture it. And um, John, thanks for putting your name. If you do want a, a, a proper credit for what you put, um, please put your name into it uh, next year's. That would be fabulous. And I am just gonna add some bullet points here so that they are easy to read. And it keeps doing that, yes. Apologies to anyone that I've just screwed up um, for things. So um, uh, it's a couple of minutes before the, the top of the hour. I would just love to finish this with a, a quick go round. So before you go, before you log off, um, I wanna hear your voice. Um, and what I'd love you for you, for you to do uh, is just either tell me what that best practices is that you just wrote, that verbalize it. Um, this also then goes on the recording or um, and or tell me the thing that you were going to do differently as a result of uh, doing this um, online discussion. So either the best practice or the online discussion, or if it's brief, you can do both. Um, and if anybody wants to start, you are invited to come off mute and start us off. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm just going to... I think the thing I'm going to do differently is think more expansively about how a resource can be useful outside of the content itself, what learning can happen around it. Um, I love that point. So thank you. Thank you, Madeline. Great. Next. I'll go. I think um, I'll think a lot about established roles and how they can interact with each other and new ways um, or become new things in and of themselves. That sounds great. I'm going to actually start um, being slightly evil and, and calling on people. Um, Neil, can I get you to come off mute and tell me those two, one or, one or both of those things? Sure. I think I stuck one, but one just came up. Um, so I, I think it was a little cheeky, but I know that we're in an online world, but it was just consider the, the consider the possibility of meeting in real life every once in a while. Um, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. That's good. Um, Camille, um, I see your head shaking in agreement. Um, can you can you tell me what you're going to do differently or your best practice? Sure. So I was more listening instead of processing myself. Um, I think one of the things. Um, we're going to think more specifically about is investing in um, the psychosocial part of leadership. Um, somebody was mentioning that as a really important aspect in leadership development and thinking about how we can bring that to our partners. Fabulous. Um, I, I hope I'm going to pronounce your name correctly, but Bao. Yeah, I didn't, but I can see that it it's Bahan, sorry. Um, yeah, Bahan. My, my name on the Zoom has been collapsed. Um, yeah, so I think in our, well, how we said we really prioritize stakeholder engagement, but also at the same time, 
I think closing the feedback loop and trying to get all constantly feedback on the resources, you know, how it's being used, like what sort of adaptability, learning from your community, learning from your network. I think that's something that's really important and useful to know. Great. Thank you. Al. Al Walid. Walid, I'm yeah, screwing up names, but Al. Um, well, um, I think that involving the community from the beginning of the project and uh, let's say rely less uh, on, on a person because um, generally you start the idea by yourself and you have your view um, and at a later stage you involve uh, people. So uh, start the, the discussion earlier. Great, thank you. Ashley. Yes, I, this is something that I've been thinking about for a while, but it came up in our small group. So it's something that I'm excited to explore further is how we're measuring success, um, not just in a qualitative, um, from a qualitative standpoint, but from a quantitative standpoint, how are we actually ensuring that our resources are effective and, and useful for the communities? That's a good one, actually. I'd love to, I would love us to do a, a session just on how do we um, measure the success of our network-centric resource. Um, so that's a super good topic. Thank you. Um, yeah, I see some up there from John. Yep. Um, Paul, can you come off mute and tell us your either best practice or what you're going to do differently from here? Let me, uh, there you go. Yeah. Um, no, I can't really. Um, <laughs> I can't tell you what I'm going to do. Um, just uh, too much to process at the moment. I'll have to see what floats to the surface, but I appreciate the opportunity. Great. I, I appreciate that, Paul, and, and apologies for putting you on the spot like that. <laughs> no but problem. thanks for, thank you for so much for your honesty on, on all that. Um, uh, uh, let's, uh, um, I'm getting sc screwed up with names. Esther, um, can you come off mute and tell us about what you're going to do differently or what are best practices for you? Yeah. Um, my name is Karen. Sorry. I'm just using somebody else's laptop. And I was trying to figure that out. <laughs> um, so yeah, doing things differently. I think this came from just looking at the bullet points, um, when we were silently Google docking. Um, I think the thing that stood out to me was really to carve out time, um, to think about the sustainability of the network. Cause I think that for myself, I often get caught up in like the day to day runnings and like, and not really having the time to design and sustain sustainability in the long term so that really resonated for me so hopefully um, I will do that uh, soon to carve out some time to think about sustainability. Great thank you so much. Um, Francesca. Sure I think um, my immediate one is you know we talk a lot all of us I think think about feedback especially when it comes to network specific resources but we talked about learning and the thing that we want to um, deep dive more deep into is in terms of the sustainability of any given network to broaden that out and think about how your network is learning and what are the mechanisms, what are the processes, how does the information get used and how do you kind of evolve over time is a big one. So that was one of the ones I put and the other one was about identity. So it's sort of a parallel track, but as a network evolves over time, how did the network members identity shift? So this is tied both to what Bauhan and Ashley was saying and earlier also to what Chad mentioned. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, uh, and apologies again for screwing up names. Belin. Sure. Um, so similarly to Francesca, maybe because we work in the same organization. Um, I was going to say the importance of listening to the voices of the members of the network in terms of what's working and what's not. And I really liked um, your comment today about um, making people's libraries. And that's definitely something I'm going to continue to think about. Great. Um, let me get my group leads um, before we go. Oh, wait, actually, I'm sorry, missing. Indira, I know you came in late, but um, is there anything that you would like to add? Um, yeah, very late. Sorry, it was in another call and I couldn't change the hour. Um, yeah, so I'm just like thinking and reading all of this. And I think I'm also part of the team of Curie Docs with Al Walid. So one of the things that I was thinking is and resonates a lot 
with this collaboratory that we are trying to kick off again. Um, so how important it is to create a format to go offline as well. And I'm also thinking about all of these people who I would love to bring to this. Um, I would love to do that, to just start a session offline, but then how do you bring all of these people who doesn't actually know that they could be part of an art um, community? who don't go introducing themselves as documentally, they are just doing it, but they don't. Yeah, so I have a lot of thoughts and things, things, a lot of things to, to think about. Thank you. Well, thanks, uh, thanks to you. Um, Bob, you came in late, uh, just gonna wanna give you an opportunity to say hello and if you have anything to add to the discussion. Yeah, um, be sure to check your time zones really well. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to be here. I was going to facilitate, and I put it on my calendar at 11 Eastern and um, realized it was 10 Eastern. So um, my apologies, but it, I'm glad to see uh, such a good group here and we'll look for the notes and, and so sad I missed this one. Uh, um, Bob, we, we missed you dearly, and uh, I've, I actually am, am w desperately wanting there to be a single time zone throughout the entire world. I think that would work. I usually Seems get it right need. too. I, I, yeah. I just, well, uh, I get it right. I, every now and then there's that major screw up and you're just like, ah. Anyways, um, I think looking at, at who is left, I've gotten everybody uh, on here. I, you guys, I, I'm just super grateful um, that you came and you, you, you had this conversation. I, like I said, I will be putting a blog post um, together. Keep an eye on your emails. Uh, uh, in your inbox because I will send out a draft version um, so that you can have inputs and make sure that I'm also crediting you pro properly and, and all of that. Um, and also let me know if you don't want to be credited um, on it. Uh, I am, uh, will take your name off if you have issues with that. Um, do continue if there's stuff you want to add into the relevant links or anything else you think um, should be added in the best practices because then it can make it into the blog post. Um, I'm super grateful. It will, I, I probably will not start working on this till tomorrow. So feel free to keep filling out that Google Doc, put good stuff in it. Um, and uh, again, I just can't say anything other than thanks. Um, uh, our, our group leaders have left, Chad, um, John, and Chloe. Um, Bob, I'm I'm grateful for you regardless because you you did help me really think this through and I know you got people in the room, um, so I'm grateful for all that. And the rest of you, thank you so much. Um, uh, just a reminder, I do offer an hour of free time for anyone that wants to talk through their network centric resource. So do get in touch if you want to do that, and be on the lookout for the emails and what's coming up. And thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no worries, Bob. But I, yeah, would I, I, yeah, I, you missed a great, a great one. But you know, you're always, you, you'll always get forgiveness in my book, Bob. Bob, if you want to chat, we can chat later. <laughs> yeah, right. I have good, notes. <laughs> Thanks. No, I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Great. Camille, I left you a message. Did you see it? Oh, no, I didn't. Okay. Um, Have a quick look before you sign off, but sure. I'll track you down if I can through Dirk. It's about housing and data and fun stuff. Yes, yes. <laughs> How do I find my messages? Oh, there we go. Um, Just do a quick whatever. Text yeah. Me. <clears throat> if not, Dirk, I'm sure we'll share your email, email address with you. Well, so yes. Neil, did you put your, your email address in there? I did. It's in the Google Doc. That's a great idea, Camille. I stuck great. an email over. Anyway, it'd be fun to connect and maybe we have some resource to share. And it's not about me. It's about the work you're doing and the work that the Co-Housing Research Network is doing. Sure. Um, more than happy to connect. I'll put my email address in there uh, in the Google Doc. Okay. Something Thanks, to Neil. Do Farewell. Bye. Thanks, you guys. We'll talk nice to you to soon. You. Bye. Bye. <laughs>